Yo, what up guys? It's Caesar back with another NFT video and today I want to talk about Solana NFTs that are absolutely taking over the marketplace. If there's any one of my videos that you should watch all the way through, this is definitely the one guys you do not want to miss any of this. Now I know I say all the time that we are super, super early to the NFT space and that is true for all of us. Even if you are, this is your first video of mine you're watching today and this is the very first you're ever hearing of anything NFTs related, then you are still super early, but you're not as early as the really, 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 really early innovators that got into projects like the Board Ape Yacht Club or Gutter Cat Gang about three to four months ago. Now, those people were extremely, extremely early in the 0.01% of people that were able to buy, you know, mint a Board Ape or Gutter Cat for, you know, about 100, 200, 300. I forget what their mint prices were, but now those projects being the trendsetters that they are, they're selling for 50,000, 100,000, a million dollars. So, those people were able to get massive, massive gains. Not to say that still isn't happening now because there is a ton of NFT projects coming out every week that are just exploding from, you know, low floors of 0 0.08 or 0 0.1 Ethereum all the way up to two or three or four or five Ethereum floors. There's still definitely a ton of money to be made on flips on the NFT marketplace and on the Ethereum marketplace as a whole. Recently, there has been a huge trend towards NFTs on different blockchains because as we've talked about in many videos, the Ethereum blockchain is super flawed. One major flaw being that the network cannot handle hundreds of thousands of transactions a second, leading to gas fees, which, you know, leading to gas fees or miners fees, which everyone that makes a transaction on the Ethereum blockchain has to pay every time they make any transaction. So if I sell an NFT, I have to pay a gas fee. If, I, if you buy an NFT, you have to pay a gas fee. If you mint one, you have to pay a gas fee, blah, blah, blah. Gas fees have always been an inconvenience, but due to the rapid amount of people joining onto the Ethereum network, gas fees are starting to go through the roof. About a month ago, I saw a statistic that absolutely blew my mind. It said that there was about, you know, 50,000 to 75,000 active wallets that were trading NFTs on OpenSea, which is the number one secondary marketplace for all NFTs on the Ethereum blockchain. That stat blew me away. I was like, I could not believe that basically all that's going on in this market and this space that seems like it's booming so big was only coming from 50 to 75,000 buyers on OpenSea. But as I said, that was a month ago and a lot changes in a month. Logan Paul's made more videos on NFTs. Steph Curry just bought an NFT the other day at Board Ape Yacht Club on the same day that Mutants dropped, which was a huge drop for the NFT world. Now, don't get me wrong, NFTs are definitely still super niche, but I just saw the updated stats the other day and there's around 200,000 active wallets and climbing every single day in the new NFT space, which is about a two to three time increase from the amount of active wallets just one month ago. And I imagine that this number will continue to exponentially grow. And with this continued growth of the NFT space, there are going to be more and more consumers that are trying to get in at cheaper prices. Even me, who I'm super bullish on the whole NFT space, to pay a, to buy an NFT that's already super expensive and then to have to pay a gas fee that's absurd, like, you know, could be as much as the NFT itself or like two to three times more. It becomes a huge barrier to entry. It's just super hard to wrap my mind around paying that much for a fee, even when I believe in the space and maybe even the project overall. It's just super hard to invest your money when you know you have to pay a ridiculous fee that really isn't supporting the project or anyone else. And as the amount of active wallets continues to increase, these gas prices are just going to get worse and worse. The NFT marketplace is basically solely responsible for all these insane gas prices. I know I saw on a website the other day that basically OpenSea accounts for 50 to 70% of all the activity on the Ethereum network. So it is basically us guys, you and me, if you're active on OpenSea, we are the ones jacking up this gas price for everyone, well, for each other. And things are starting to get insane. Just a few days ago, 13% of the whole entire Ethereum network was uh, being used on the L Cabones drop or Cabones, whatever. And I can talk about that collection in another video, but people said that they saw or were paying two to $3,000 gas fees, which is absolutely insane and makes the marketplace super unfair because if I'm really rich and I'm like, okay, this collection is the next board API club, you know, they can afford to pay a two to $3,000 gas fee, which, you know, is certainly an inconvenience to them, but definitely manageable. Whereas me or anyone else trying to get into the space is like, you know, you're basically screwed out of trying to get your uh, product, which makes NFTs a really hard space to get into and something that is really only manageable for the super rich. But thankfully, there are quite a few other blockchains that are coming forward to compete with Ethereum, which is really going to help overall because, you know, uh, in the business world, you know, monopolies suck. As much as I love the Ethereum blockchain and, you know, it's done so much for me in the whole NFT space as a whole, 
you know, it's never great when there's no competition in a marketplace. And while Ethereum has said that it will fix the gas issues pretty soon here with Ethereum 2.0 and staking and, you know, things coming out in the next two to three years, They've been saying that for quite a long time. These gas issues on Ethereum have been around since the inception of NFTs. And some of the very beginner projects like the Crypto Kitties caused huge problems on the network because people were trying to breed these kittens and everything. And just, you know, the network could not handle the amount of transactions that were going on. So over time, it's kind of like cyclical. It's almost like a stock market. We see that the gas prices, you know, spike whenever some new people come to the network. And then, you know, Ethereum kind of figures out the problem. The gas prices start to dip again. And then, you know, something new happens and then the network use spikes up again. And it's just a really cyclical recurring issue, it seems. And that's where we come to the topic of today's video with the Solana blockchain and Solana NFTs. Now, before we take a closer look at the Solana blockchain, I just wanted to take a quick brief look at some of their competitors and just really talk about why Solana is in the position they're in today. Now, at the time of me recording this video, Tuesday, August 31st, 2021, these are the prices of some notable cryptocurrencies. First off, obviously being Ethereum and the Ethereum blockchain. Ethereum's doing pretty good right now. I know they had stagnated at around the 3200 level, but as of today, Ethereum is at $3,400 at the time of this video, up $950 in the last month. And now the rest of the cryptocurrencies I'm going to be talking about in this video are competing with the Ethereum blockchain, trying to build a network and a network that can handle a serious amount of free transactions. Each one of these blockchains I'm about to mention is competing directly with Ethereum and they are trying to beat them out by having low gas fees or no gas fees at all. Now, the first of many is ADA or Cardano. Now, I've been hearing about Cardano for a long time and I personally haven't looked too much into Cardano even though I just put like $25 into it last week but I will be making a video in the future shortly about Cardano and Cardano NFTs. Before I heard all this talk about Solana, I heard a lot of talk about Cardano NFTs and I've seen quite a few comments recently. I even got one yesterday asking me to talk a little bit about those. So I'll definitely be talking about those in the future, but you'll see here exactly why I decided to talk about Solana before I talked about ADA. And that is because Cardano or ADA, their coin is currently at a price of $2.77 which is up $1.46 this month, which is great, but still a pretty cheap coin. Uh, they got pretty close to $3, but they're still hanging in there. And I see a lot of people that are super bullish on Cardano. They still only think it could reach, you know, $10, $20, or even lower than that by the end of the year. The next blockchain I wanted to mention is the Polygon blockchain. I know that we've talked quite a bit on this channel about the Polygon blockchain. So I'm sure you guys are saying, you know, Caesar, you're telling me about Polygon and how it's free to mint. If this Solana is the same thing, what's going on with Polygon and, and Solana, why are they different? What's going on with their prices? Now, despite the Polygon chain being implemented onto OpenSea and the Polygon blockchain being used by Tom Brady uh, and his company Autograph for their NFT autograph collections, Polygon still isn't having much movement in terms of price. Today, Polygon is trading at around 1.34. They've been going down a little bit in the last few days and they reached a high of 170 within the last month. So you know, still under $2 and not seeing a lot of price action there. I'm not saying that Polygon is no longer a good investment or anything about that. I'm not saying anything bearish at all about Polygon or Cardano. It's just that these coins are still relatively small in comparison to Solana, which as of today is trading at $109. Earlier in the day, they were trading at a high of $130. Uh, before there was, you know, some midday consolidation and seems like things aren't going back up to that level, but at least they set that price point, you know, for the future. And just one month ago, Solana was at $32 and a year ago they were at $1.09. So the Solana coin has been going absolutely crazy. I know I talked about it in my altcoin video last week, how they went from, you know, $30 to $70 within a day. And I thought, you know, I'd love to invest in some Solana, but I was gonna wait a little bit for some market consolidation. Usually when something rips that much, it consolidates a little, but I guess not because now they're up to $100. And I should buy some now because obviously we saw that price high of 130. Now they're back at 109. Now I just wanted to give you guys that brief overview of the coin market because it really shows how, you know, obviously Ethereum is dominating the market and they're the first, you know, really crypto network and has all these decentralized applications and things like NFTs and everything, which is great. It shows how much Solana has taken the lead as, you know, an Ethereum competitor. I've even heard some people say that Solana is the Ethereum killer. Now, as I said earlier, even though I would love the idea of Ethereum reigning supreme, I'd love to just invest all my money in Ethereum and hope it goes through the roof. But, you know, in a perfect world, we don't really want to see a monopoly because if there are all these networks competing with each other, it should lead to the best experience for us, the users or customers. And I believe in the future, while they say like Solana killer, or Solana killer, while they say Ethereum killer and whatnot, I believe that 
in the future, there will probably be five to 10 networks that are, you know, uh, the main networks, like just how we have like different mobile providers, like Sprint and Verizon and, you know, Virgin Mobile, whatever. In the future, I'm sure we'll have different branches of NFTs like Ethereum, Solana, and you know, whatever more ones hop into the space. But at the moment, it appears that Solana is easily the number one competitor to Ethereum. I know a lot of people said it was Cardano for a long time. And I do think Cardano definitely has a chance to come back. Like I said, nothing bearish about them, but all the spotlight right now is on Solana and Solana NFTs. The coin price is going absolutely insane. But honestly, I really don't know much of the specific differences between any of these platforms. They all basically do nearly identically the same things. I know that the Ethereum, obviously they are their own network. Cardano is their own network as well. And they're just beginning to get into smart contracts and everything, which is what Ethereum has. Ethereum has smart contracts, which is basically just you know, a contract made with computer code. That's what allows for all these decentralized applications and OpenSea and NFTs in the first place. So with Cardano introducing smart contracts, they'll be able to have their own decentralized platforms and NFTs and everything. So that's going to be a huge development for them. They're their own network. The Polygon network is a layer two solution on the Ethereum blockchain. So they are still in some way, shape or form, basically, on the Ethereum network. So they're not their own network like Solana or ADA is. But beside that fact, it appears that all these alternative networks are basically offering the same thing. They're all offering cheaper, easier transactions. On Polygon, I know that there are no gas fees whatsoever. On Solana, there is a tiny gas fee. I believe it's like, you know, less than a cent or something. And Solana can handle hundreds of thousands of transactions a second, as opposed to Ethereum, which can, you know, maybe do tens of thousands. And one of these networks is going to absolutely explode in the future. Uh, Solana obviously seems like it is primed in position to do that. But while I believe Ethereum will always have some type of place in the NFT space, the whole market is going to really quickly here transfer to one of these blockchains that makes it easier uh, for people to buy and removes that barrier of entry that is the gas fees and all this money. I've seen so many comments saying, you know, Caesar, I have $50 or $100, you know, how should I invest in NFTs? And I know I made a video a few days ago about what I would do if I had $100 to invest in NFTs, but that was honestly a little bit clickbait because with gas fees and everything, it's almost impossible to invest in any NFT without spending at least $100 or more. And that's going to, you know, prevent a ton of people from entering the space because you know, if you're just trying to get into it and you really don't know anything about it and you're just some average Joe, like how are you ever going to get into something if you have to throw a huge amount of money at it at first before you can even, you know, start to learn or buy into it? I love a great comparison is things like Robinhood. It was really hard for a lot of people to get into stocks and, you know, spend a lot of money. Do I do this? Do I do that? A lot of people, it was a hard barrier to entry for stocks. But now that you can just download an app on your phone and put you know, $5 into Apple or something, makes it a lot easier for people to invest. And that's why we see platforms like Robinhood getting so big. And I know a lot of passionate members of the NFT community are sick and tired of these gas fees. So them, as well as these new people that are wanting to get into the community and not spend as much money, they're really going to be considering buying these, you know, different types of NFTs on different networks that allow for cheap transactions. And honestly, so much more, because when you can have cheap transactions, it really, changes so much. Due to the outrageous gas fees on the Ethereum blockchain, we need to try to make as little transactions as possible, which makes it extremely difficult and really limits, you know, artist creativity. Because in the future with networks such as Solana, there will be projects where you'll be able to buy different clothes for your NFT or level them up or change the properties or, you know, maybe some type of gameplay or something where, you know, your NFT updates over time or anything. But this is not really, it's possible on the Ethereum network, but it's, extremely difficult like every time your nft changes you need to pay a gas fee which is just outrageous why would you do any of that if you have to pay money to do it so this is going to be absolutely huge for nfts and their utility in the future i really do believe that one of these networks will dominate that sector of the market of uh you know really high utility nfts that change or level up or have you know, interesting incentives that swap them out or something, you know, there's so many possibilities along with the uh, possibility of larger collections. As of right now, there's only 10 to 20,000 assets in a lot of these profile picture collections. And that leads to 3,000, 4,000 owners. Just a few months ago, you wanted to see two to two and a half owners uh, to know it was a good project. Nowadays, it's like four to maybe six. Some projects are really starting to get a ton of owners. As I said, the space is growing dramatically, but still this is minuscule compared to what could happen on a chain like Solano. If you, you can make a project with a hundred thousand NFTs. And the problem now is that it's hard for the, like a problem, a project with a hundred thousand NFTs on the Ethereum blockchain wouldn't stand a chance because as of right now, like I said, there's barely that many people out there buying these NFTs. So 
you know, there's not many people trying to get that huge barrier to entry and pay gas fees. But with so many people getting into the market, if you have a 100,000 NFT collection that you price at $20, you would be making 2 million, which is the same as selling 10,000 for 200. And you would have a much, much larger community, which honestly, this is kind of inspiring me. I think it's a little too late. I think my project, unfortunately, is going to have to be on the Ethereum blockchain. But it's just the beginning and there's so much going on with that. Uh, be sure to join my Super Starfish Discord. The link is in the description if you haven't done so already. That's my main Discord and it also serves as the Discord for my project, which is coming out pretty soon. We're just waiting to announce things right now because we've just been so busy and there's so much going on in our lives, but it's coming very soon. I was nervous. I wanted to get it out as quick as possible, but now I'm really thinking that with the channel growing, I just wanna take my time because like I said, I want this pro to be a project that grows over 10 years, 20 years. So I'm really not worried about when it comes out, but this will be huge for Solana NFTs because if you have a project with 10 to 20,000 owners, the word of mouth is going to be huge. It's gonna beat out, their marketing is going to beat out any other NFT collection that even has a marketing team or anything because with that many people telling their friends and saying this and join in and you know this new Solana project is the wave, it's just bound to go through the roof. Now to follow up and share some stats on the Solana marketplace and how it's been going, I found this great tweet before I started and the number one Solana NFT marketplace right now is called Solan Art. Now this is basically like an open sea, but for the Solana blockchain. And I went on there and it's still very primitive. There's a pop-up that comes up saying like the website's in beta and just the whole user experience of the website is pretty flawed. I know that there's an update coming supposedly pretty soon but it's just a very unattractive website. It hurts my eyes. It's like, it's definitely not the easiest platform. OpenSea, maybe I've just gotten used to OpenSea, but I think the OpenSea user interface is really well done. Whereas Solana's is just cluttered and just, I don't know, I don't like it as much. I feel like it makes it harder and just a less, you know, overall welcoming experience. But there are more Solana marketplaces coming soon, which we are going to get into at the end of the video. But just really quickly, these are the stats for Solan Art, which is the basically first Solana NFT marketplace. And so they dropped about two months ago, solanart.io. And I saw this tweet that they have done 1 million Solana in volume, which is $100 million at today's current evaluation. But who knows how much, you know, two months ago, uh, Solana was at 30 bucks. So not sure how much money has actually been moved through these NFTs. But just to let you guys know of some of the top projects on Solana, they showed some really interesting statistics. And that is that 49% of that 1 million Solana volume has come through the Degen Ape Academy project, which, you know, I'll get into, I can make videos on these projects if you guys want me to, let me know in the comments. It might be a little late on these projects, guys. They're all about 1,300 to $2,000, if not a little bit more. So unfortunately, a little too late for me to buy in because I am scared. If Solana's huge, these guys could absolutely explode. I really wish I could invest in these guys, but for me, it's just a little too risky for me. I am a little bit scared. But like I said, if Solana ends up blowing up in the future, then these guys could be known as the first project or the Bored Apes or something. I am a little bit concerned that they're apes. As I said, I believe the NFT market could be a zero sum game where there could be apes collections everywhere that all succeed. But I really think that sometimes you need a different mascot to lead something, you know, like Sony didn't make another Italian plumber. They made Crash Bandicoot or something, you know, I don't think like the ape thing should, I don't know. I don't know how the apes will do, but as of right now, they are basically dominating the Solana marketplace. 49%, damn near half of the whole volume going right through that collection. Second with 23.31% of the Solana volume in the past two months are the Solana Punks, which is just a derivative project of Punks as we see all the time on OpenSea. Not too big on those guys, but clearly a lot of the marketplace is. Now 12.4% of the market is taken up by the Bold Badgers, which is crazy because their collection just dropped about two to three days ago, I believe. And this is why we need to get on the Solana wave fast, guys. I really wish I could have done more research onto this earlier in the week, but as I said, it's been a pretty hectic time. Uh, this collection, the Bold Badgers, they launched hours late, I guess. They crashed to Solon Art and they had 50K people on the server, which I guess can only have a 100 person capacity on their mint page or something. Saw a ton of people super upset about not being able to get in on those guys. And I understand why, because now they are reselling at crazy prices. And the artwork actually looks really good. And like I said, they're not apes and they're not a punk derivative. So this could be the first ever big project on the Solana blockchain. But with 50K people on the server, as I said, you know, that's damn near 25% of the whole entire OpenSea marketplace. And you know, 50K is basically the amount of active wallets that was on OpenSea a month ago. So 
that just shows that sullen art is really taking off and quite fast but as i said i really do not like that marketplace it really doesn't look too good to me but on friday the supposedly first ever open nft marketplace on the solana blockchain will be dropping soulc.io now i don't think they're at all related to OpenSea, but that's just a little play on words maybe but it seems like they're going to have a lot of great incentives on the platform. They claim that they have integrated minting onto the platform. They will also have a rarity index, as well as allowing creators to embed licenses within their NFTs and much more utility that we'll break down in another video. I should hopefully be making a video on Soulsea within the next few days, just really breaking down that website and what it's all gonna be about. But I just wanted to give this out to you guys right now because I think it's absolutely huge. You should start researching Solana and Solan Art and Soulsea because I really feel like Soulsea will be the platform just like OpenSea to really kick down the door for Solana NFTs. If Solanart hasn't done it already, I really think that Soulsea is where, you know, the mainstream or like the rest of us on the Ethereum blockchain that still haven't, you know, tampered or gotten into Solana NFTs. I think Soulsea is where a lot of people will make that jump. And as I said, this means that we get another chance to be early innovators and maybe you can mint the next Bored Ape or Gutter Cat Gang that will be on the Solana blockchain. So with that being said, guys, be sure to leave me any questions you have on Solana NFTs or really anything else in the NFT space. I'll be trying to respond to, I always respond to every comment actually. Uh, just give me a few days. Sometimes it gets a bit hectic, but I'll also be making a TikTok very soon where I'll be answering a lot of your guys' questions. I'll be doing like Q&A format shorts, which I'll be uploading to YouTube as well. Uh, just so that I can answer a lot of your guys' questions. Because a lot of you guys have a lot of great questions and there's things that I don't want to make a full video about, but I feel like all of my subscribers should hear that question, you know? So so with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm going to stop rambling. This has been a long enough video. I always try to make these videos five minutes and then they end up being 45. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great week and I'll see you next time. Peace.